rolling, 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 roll high. 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 Did I get a high? Yeah. They keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Though the streams are swollen, keep them doggies rolling raw high. Wind and weather, tail bent for leather, wishing my gal was by my side. All the things I'm missing, did loving and kissing, I was waiting at the end of my ride. Move them on, hit him up, hit him on, move him up, move him on, hit him up, raw hide. Ride him in, cut him out, cut him out, ride him in, cut it out, ride him in, raw hide. Moving, 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 though they're just approving, they keep them doggies moving raw high. Don't try to understand them, just go open brand them. You know they'll be living high and wide. Our heart's calculating that your love will be waiting, waiting at the end of my ride. You head him up, ride him in, ride him in, head him up, head him up, ride him in raw high. Cut him out, ride him in, ride him in, cut him out, cut him out, ride him in, raw high. Ready? Here we go. Rolling, 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 rolling. A big hand again. Let me introduce our stellar cast who's going to be reading from this script. We have Delana Studi right here. Dana Sparks. Irene Sue. Lee Purcell, whose show was on just Sunday. Stephanie Powers. These ladies are our Wranglerettes. Okay. Now the Wranglers. We have Bruce Boxleitner as Dudson. Cowboy Bruce Davison. And Jim Beaver as, as Jack Elam. All right, and then we have guest stars too. We don't just have these top line people above the title, right? You guys are all above the title? We have guest stars, and the guest stars alphabetically will be Robert Carradine, Gregory Gast, Darby Hinton, Monty Markham, Wyatt McRae, Chris Mulkey, Robert Pine, Rudy Ramos, Stan Rutledge, Peter Shereko, and Spaghetti Western superstar Robert Woods. Now to tell you a little history about the ladies from Lonesome and why we're here is two-time Emmy winner, Kirk Ellis. Good morning, everybody. It's a very moving experience for me to be up here and seeing this fantastic crowd. All I can say is that I, I wish you were actually in a the theater watching the movie that Burke Kennedy would have made from this script. I had the great privilege to, to know Bert as both a friend and as a mentor in the, the last 10 or 15 years of his life. And he was a remarkable individual. And in his heyday, he was one of the top box office directors. I'm sure you all remember Support Your Local Sheriff, which was one of the top 10 grossing films of that year, The War Wagon. But for the last 10 years of his life, Bert struggled to get a film made. And I always told people that Bert didn't leave the movies. The movies left him. 
but he had a remarkable work ethic. He taught me a lot about what it meant to be a screenwriter in terms of not only your economy of expression, but your discipline. He wrote every day. And this is the last script he was working on, and he didn't quite finish it. But those of you who know his work will recognize a lot of Bert's tropes, as well as a lot of his dialogue. Bert was not above recycling his best lines from film to film. <laughs> So, if you know the Randolph Scott films he did with Bud Bedecker, you will see, hear some of those, those refrains and some of that dialogue. But this is a real legacy, and I can't thank Rob enough, and to this remarkable group of people standing behind me who gave of their time and talent to pay homage to one of the truly great screenwriters that motion pictures have produced. So, one more hand for the cast, please. Um, and with that, I give you Act One of The Ladies from Lonesome, A Work in Progress by Bert Kennedy. Fade in, Monument Valley, day, full shot. Giant red rock monument stands silent, sentinel over a vast stretch of red desert. Now we see two specks of movement in the sea of empty land. In closer, now we move with two dust-covered cowboys who are all but lost in the magnitude of the surrounding desert. We stay with them as they trudge along in silence. The one in front is tall and handsome, and the other carries two saddles and a troubled expression. This, then, is Ben Dunstan and Dusty Rhodes. You sure this is a shortcut to the relay station? Keep walking. Well, that's what you said ten miles ago. Wish the hell you hadn't. You'd have better saddles and on that inside straight instead of our horses, you idiot. It was a spade flush. Well, not after you caught that diamond, it wasn't. Dusty is about to add more when the sound of gunfire cuts him short. And they spin to see a herd of cattle explodes over the mask of a nearby cut bank and goes thundering down a sheer cliff to a shallow canyon below. Next moment, a chuck wagon clears the cut bank and it too plunges down the slant, followed by outriders all firing their Winchesters back off. High wild action as we intercut to see that the herd of stampeding cattle and the five drovers are being chased by six Comanche warriors, their horses and faces splashed with blood red war paint. We stay with the running battle, intercutting to build the excitement and establishing that the drovers are excellent riders and fighters. Next moment, they too plunge over the edge of the cut bank and slide their horses down the steep slope. Only then do we come around to see Ben Dunstan and Dusty Rhodes taking in all the action from the far side of the shallow canyon. Now the drovers manage to work their horses down in among the milling cattle and are lost in a cloud of dust but they are still catching hell from the Comanches above. A moment of decision for Ben and Dusty. Then they are suddenly on their feet and running down the slope to join the gun battle. A roaring moment later, they slide to a stop alongside a trail-worn chuck wagon. The cook, called Jake Jackson, fires a Winchester high off at the attackers. Now Ben and Dusty gain his side and join the fight. They blaze away for a wild moment then when the gunfire ends, and the Comanches spin their horses and ride away, Jake, the cook, who looks like Jack Elam. <laughs> it's what it says. <laughs> Much blige. Name's Jake. I'm Ben Dunstan. This is Dusty Rhodes. Ben is jacking a spent shell from his Winchester when he turns to see one of the drovers is moving on through a cloud of dust in amongst the cattle, carrying a day-old calf. A big hat holds the drover a stranger until the calf is being lifted up over the tailgate of the wagon. Only then do we realize that the drover is a woman. This is Rose, and she's a knockout. I told you not to put any more calves in my wagon. We can't leave them behind. They'll die. That's what you do on a cattle drive. Not this drive. The one called Rose spins and storms off. <laughs> Women. Five enough. They're pushing his herd to the railhead. 
How the hell come? The war. Army took every able-bodied man in the territory. I tried to join, but they said my body wasn't able. Now, an equally handsome woman astride a big bay horse crosses on around the wagon and pulls to a stop. This is Lily, the ramrod. We'll let the cattle soak in the rest of the day, move out in the morning. Jake grunts as Lily turns to move away. She's the trail boss. Name's Lily. Yeah, well, I know her. She from Kate's place at Lonesome. Oh. <laughs> oh, they all work there. Not anymore. Lily married a rancher. Now he's a soldier boy, and she's the owner ramrod of this outfit. Probably try to hire you on. Well, can we're afoot. We stud game costs our horses. No problem. We got ten extra head. Kind of rank, but uh, you two look like horse tamers. Yeah, well, he can ride anything with hair on it. <laughs> we get a pained reaction from Ben. <laughs> then a close shop, a big roan screams in wild-eyed terror as he lowers his head and bucks up a storm across a makeshift rope corral. Ben Dunstan holds on for dear life as we intercut to build the struggle between man and animal. As we do, we get close cuts of Dusty, Jake, Rose, and Lily, plus other gal drovers. China. She, too, worked for Kate in Lonesome, but she is as good as any horsebacker in the Southwest. Reba, who could stand. She is a knockout and rides like a Comanche. <laughs> she owns a guitar, and she used to sing to the drunks at Kate's place. Now she sings to the cows at Night Watch. Bertha. She has eyes for Jake the cook, ropes and brands with the best of them, and would like to rope old Jake himself. Full shot of a pained reaction from all, now as Ben and the big roan crash to the ground in a sea of dust. Now Dusty crosses to the fallen Ben. You gonna cross? <laughs> Next. Another pained reaction from Dusty as we smash cut to now Dusty hangs on for dear life as yet another Bronco all but tears himself in two trying to throw his rider. Full shot of reactions all around then Dusty too takes to the air like a big wingless bird and crashes to the ground. And we dissolve to the cow camp. Medium shot Ben, Dusty, Jake and the magnificent five sit around a campfire drinking coffee. Nothing but the sound of milling cattle for a long, lonesome moment. <laughs> Lily. I haven't said it yet. That we're crazy. Women driving the herd to the railhead. Well, this time of year you are. Comanches can only raid as far as their horses can graze. And with as much rain as we've had, they can range clear to the red. Which, by the way, is also so swollen you'll never get across. Well, we can't turn back now. Ben is about to object when he's cut short by a distant rumble of thunder. Like Ben looks high off at the troubled sky. Like I said. More thunder a troubled look from Lily as we dissolve to camp. Night. A driving rain has now hit the cow camp. We search the rain-swept herd, ending on Jake Jackson's chuck wagon. The wind has torn part of the canvas back and the calves are getting soaked. Now we see Dusty cross on, take off his coat, and cover the day-old calf we saw Rose put in the wagon. Now Dusty is soaked, but the calf is happy as hell. I like you. <laughs> Dusty turns to see the one called Rose behind him. So do they. Hmm. Yeah, well, uh, they think I'm their mother. <laughs> I'm one. A mother. Oh. Well, I hate to hear that. I mean, that you're married. Mm, not anymore. What, the army take them? A woman. Oh. Oh, well, in that case, army wouldn't have changed them up anyway. I mean, they, they don't want soldiers that are crazy in the head, and if he, he'd have to be if he left you. 
Dusty is about to continue when a crash of thunder cuts him short and a sudden gust of wind rips at the canvas covering the calves. Both Dusty and Rose reach into the wagon bed to calm the frightened calves. Now Dusty makes a grab for the two-day-old two calf and finds himself with his arms around Rose instead. A moment of understanding as we hold on the pair for a tender while then. Yeah. Well, my name's Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's Rose. No. Big country day, full shot. The storm is over. The one called Lily rides the point as Ben, Dusty, and the other drovers haze the herd up over the rim of the cut bank and head north toward the railhead. Big shot, day, we hold high away, tracking the herd across a vast sweep of empty land. You can almost hear the music as we intercut with the cattle and outriders to establish distance and a growing attraction between Dusty and Rose as they horse around in the dust riding drag. Horse now there. Ben swings his horse in beside Dusty. I say we should talk these ladies into turning back. Well, that ain't gonna be easy. Well, either is pushing these cows 400 miles to the railhead. But what the hell, it's not my problem. First town we come to, I'm cutting out. Well, you, you can't do that. The hell I can't. And if you're smart, you'll do it too. No, I can't. You mean you won't? No, I mean I can't. You got any idea how little time there is for romance on a cow drive? Now who's talking about romance? I've seen the way you've been sparking up to that rose. Well, I don't want to see her hair hanging from a ridgepole of a Comanche war lodge, if that's what you mean. Well, yours could be hanging right alongside if you still. Yeah. Well, I ain't a bunch quitter, and that's final. Or well, that's your funeral. Ben swings his horse away before Dusty can answer, and we dissolve to wild country, day. More cuts of the cattle drive. Then we center on Jake Jackson driving the chuck wagon. We stay with him as the day old calf makes a couple of attempts to climb up on the spring seat with him. Then the one called Bertha brings her horse up to the offside wheel of the wagon and rides alongside. Jake throws her a troubled look and keeps driving. Finally, you a married man, Jake. Uh, nope. And I don't intend to be. Well, what a man intends and what he does could be a different thing. Yeah, I got by this long without a wife. I figure I can make it the rest of the way. <laughs> well, if you should change your mind. Bertha swings her horse around and spurs off toward the rear of the herd. Jake watches her go. Grunts to himself and keeps driving, and we dissolve to Hillside Day. Looking off across two blood-stained arrows, we see Lily and Ben coming up the slant toward us on a hell-bent run. Only then do we realize that the arrows are sticking in the side of a dead cow. A roaring moment later, Ben and Lily drag their running horses to a long, sliding halt, swing down and cross to the dead animal. Lily is visibly shaken and she looks at the Comanche arrows. Any questions? With this, Ben turns, crosses to his horse, swings up and rides off, leaving a troubled lily standing alone. Dissolved to camp, night. A thick blanket of fog covers the cow camp. Looking off over at Jake's chuck wagon, we see China and Reba tying horses to a makeshift picket line. Now Lily and Ben move on, cross toward the watch fire in the center of the camp. We're in closer now on Ben and Lily. Now as a coyote howls way off in the distance. That a coyote? <laughs> no, it's just Darby Hinton. <laughs> Better put a double guard on the picket line. Commands run off with our horses. We'll play hell trying to stay alive on foot. As they gain the watch fire, Ben bends down, picks up a log, and throws it on the fire. And keep this fire going all night. You trying to scare me, Mr. Dutton? I'm trying to... Hold it. Somebody's out there. High tension as we search the camp just beyond the flickering flame light. Tension continues to mount as we intercut 
to build the suspense, bring it to a crescendo, and then... Come on, look here! We're coming in! Only then do we see first one, then five other men move on and out of the darkness. Even in the dim light, we can see that they are rough customers in sun-faded range clothes. The one in the middle, obviously the leader, wears a canvas top coat and a grim expression. We'll call him Kemper. Saw your fire. Thought you might have some coffee. Truth is, we've been trailing your herd for two days. I told the boys, we ought to throw in with you. You're gonna need every gun you can get between here and a red. Boy said, they'd rather take your cows for their own. Come morning, that's what we intend to do. What a man intends and what he does. <laughs> Jake Jackson is on the chuck wagon with a shotgun pointed at the six intruders. Ain't always the same. Gal told me that. Kemper tightens, and for a tension-filled moment, we think he and the others are going to go for their guns. Then, the spraying of breech metal turns them to see Lily jacks around into the chamber of her Winchester, and we sweep to see Rose, Bertha, and China do the same. Tension mounts as we intercut to build the standoff. Then Kemper smiles. They'll be here next time. Discretion being the better part of valor, Kemper and his boys back slowly away into the night, and we fade out and fade in full shot day. Morning finds the herd moving out in the near distance. Ben and Lily are riding drag. We're in closer on Ben and Lily now, and Ben turns in the saddle and looks back to see the battleground. That fellow was right about one thing last night. We could have used those extra guns. They gig their horses and take off to catch up with the herd as we dissolve to Mesa Day. The herd has pulled to a stop and is milling about atop a low mesa overlooking a scattering of buildings in the near beyond. This then is Junction Wells. This is where Ben is going to cut out. He stands alongside his horse, lashing on his slicker and saddlebags. The one called Lily sits astride her horse, watching him prepare to pull out. Well, I hate to leave you like this. Then don't. A guilty moment for Ben, then. Well, um, look, I'll ask around town, see if I can find any hands to hire on, at least as far as the red. Don't go to any trouble. Ben wants to stay as we intercut to build the moment. Then Ben swings up on his horse and gigs him into a run. Lily watches him calmly as Ben moves off down the slant toward the junction in the near beyond. Then... Rose! Rose! Reba and Rose are picking up strays and turning them back into the herd when they hear Lily calling them. Without breaking stride, they double back and head for Lily at a full gallop. A moment later... They pull to a sliding stop alongside the ramrod. Ride into town and find the sheriff. Ride into town and find the sheriff. Tell him to arrest Ben Dunstan. What for? Well, he's riding one of my horses. Reba and Rose dull spur their horses into a full run down the slant in the direction taken by Ben. Close shot, a small smile of triumph from Lily as we dissolve to the Mesa. Close shot, day. A highly disgruntled Ben Dunstan sits Lily's horse, his hands tied behind his back. The tongue of Jake's chuck wagon acts as a makeshift gallows. A catch rope has been strung from behind the whiffle tree up through the tip of the tongue ring and down around Ben's neck. Dusty and the others look on in silence wanting to smile, but not daring to. She gave me this horse. You sure you want to go through with this, ma'am? What? Not a, um... Oh, wait, I'm sorry I jumped you. Yeah, I know. It's embarrassing. <laughs> let's, let's take it from the top, page one. 
So arrest me. <laughs> right. Go on. Oh, Michael. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you stay out of this. No. Oh, not me. She you sure you want to go through with this? No, she gave me this horse, number 18. What am I on here? <sighs> she gave me this horse. Well, what's that? Let's just hang him. Oh, that's you. You've got the sheriff line on page 17. Okay, it's yours. We go pick it up with the sheriff line, right? Yeah. Okay. okay, take two. <laughs> you, uh, you sure you want to go through with this, ma'am? She gave me the horse. No, you stay out of it. Stay out of it? I'm about to get my neck stretched. Not if you stay on with the outfit. See, that proves it, Sheriff. She's lying to keep me along on the drive. Well, sounds like a pardon to me. Well, what do you say? Well, what the hell else can I say? Go on, cut him loose, Sheriff. The Sheriff moves his animal in close to Ben and cuts his hands loose. You know, I was there for a minute, I, uh, I thought you were going to let me string him up. There for a minute, I was. Hmm. Ben throws Lily a rotten look as we dissolve to the chuck uh, wagon. Day. Ben is shaving with a straight razor. The great looking gal, China, is holding a mirror for him. Ooh. All right. Dusty and Jake watch in silence. Ask me if she was bluffing. Yeah, then why didn't you call her hand? Well, I didn't like the odds. <laughs> huh. Don't you have anything better to do, China? Go help Rose and Bertha. China turns and crosses away to follow orders. As she does, we come around to see a troop of cavalrymen in a column of twos working its way along the flank of the herd heading for the cow camp. A moment later, they gain the chuck wagon and pull to a halt. Now, the commanding officer brings his horse up to Ben, Dusty, Lily, and Jake. Who's the trail boss of this outfit? I am. I'm Captain York, 5th Cavalry. We have orders to sweep the territory of hostiles between here and the Red. I'd say that calls for a celebration. The one called China is catching hell from a wild stray as Rose and Bertha struggle to burn a mark on him as we dissolve to camp night. Form your squares. Banjo and fiddle music accompanied by a sudden chorus of yells and laughter as we come away to see a hoedown erupt in the center. In the light of a roaring campfire, we see Lily in a low-cut dress is a knockout as she dances with Captain York. Dusty <laughs> dances with Rose. The other drovers are paired off with soldiers all are having a good time, except Ben, who is not at all happy with Lily dancing with the officer. He feels a tug of jealousy, and that makes him even more upset. The doll, called China, is dancing and having a good time with a young soldier. Now, they dance their way beyond the flame light of the roaring fire and disappear into the darkness, hand in hand. Dissolve to river, night. The faint sound of music comes over as we see the young soldier come out of the bushes leading China by the hand. Come on. Shh. <laughs> a moment later, they reach the bank of a thin river and start to undress. China giggles as she has trouble with a button. A moment later, they drop their clothes, move out into the river, and sink naked into the water. Oh, I can't touch bottom. I can. <laughs> she giggles again as the soldier boy kisses her to keep her quiet as they come up for air. Where did you learn to kiss like that? I'm the company bugler. <laughs> Cut to camp, night. The dance is still in full swing. Dusty and Rose are having a good time, but not Ben. A small smile from Lily as she realizes Ben is jealous. Then we cut to the river, night. Dead of night. A coyote howls in the night. Another answers. This one closer. 
In the dim light of the night, we see the young soldier and China locked into each other's arms on the riverbank. Sounds like the dance is over. You want to go back? To you? What do you think? <laughs> the soldier's arms go full around China. We stay with the pair intercutting to build their lovemaking. Then China's eyes go wide with terror. The young, <coughs> the young soldier feels her tighten under his arms, turns to see a blinding blur of motion no! as a war lance in the hands of a Comanche warrior plunges down out of the night straight at the soldier's back. The panic-stricken soldier throws up an arm to ward off the shaft. Sudden blood as the lance digs through the young soldier and pins the naked pair to the bank of the river. A shattering wave of pain engulfs China as we intercut to build the horror and disbelief in her eyes. One last desperate struggle to stay alive and then the soldier and China go limp in each other's arms. The silent slaughter is almost over before it began. Nothing but dead night. Then the Comanche pulls a knife and reaches down for China's long black hair. And we fade out. Fade in on the river, day. The horror of the night before is forgotten in the warmth of the morning sun as we hold high on the cow camp. Then start slow down as we bring Dusty toward us at an aimless walk. A moment later, we are looking off over the blood-red shaft of the Comanche war lance on the riverbank. Now Dusty sees it, stops dead in his tracks, and stares off at the bloody remains of the young soldier in China, spiked to the bank. Bam! We dissolve to the hillside, day, full shot. Ben is surrounded by Lily, Dusty, Rose, Jake, Reba, and the others as he reads from a battered Bible over the freshly dug graves of the young soldier in China. In the far beyond, we see the troop of cavalry crossing the thin river at a full run and heading north. We're in closer now on Ben, now as he says, Amen, and closes the Bible. Amen. Amen. I'll hitch the wagon. Don't bother, Jake. We're turning back. I guess I was wrong about you. So was I. I thought I could face up to it if something like this happened. I can't. Well, you have to. Otherwise, China here died for nothing. Poor baby. She thought this was all a game we were playing. Well, the game's over. Lily turns and heads off down the hillside. Rose, Reba, and Bertha hesitate an uncertain moment. Then they move down to stop the troubled Lily. We know how you feel, Lily. But Ben is right. Well, he's the one who wanted me to turn back in the first place. I should have listened to him. Like you listened to those in Lonesome who said that women didn't stand a chance to drive a herd to the railhead? Yeah. Getting China killed is a high price to pay for pride. Depends on how you look at it. Well, I'll tell you how I look at it. I shamed China into coming along. I told her no matter what happened, it was better than working as a whore and lonesome. I was wrong. Depends how you look at it. Now, you already said that. Well, here's something I didn't say. You talked me and the others mm -hmm. into taking the herd to the railhead just like you did China. Talked us into it so good. We're going to do it whether you come along or not. A silent standoff as we intercut to build the tension. Finally. Well? Jay, hitch up the wagon. End of Act One. 